Hello everyone, today we're going to dive deeper into using the Flux context and combining it with AI video, which is what we do most of the time. And of course, for the AI video we'll be using WAN 2.1 as the example. We can combine images in different ways, like this. Also, we can take an existing image, modify it with the Flux context, just a little twist on the coloration or small item changes in the image, and then animate that with video, as well as add some realism styles. Now, for the Flux context, if you missed the previous tutorials on how to install it, where to put the files or which folders to use, you can check out my earlier video right here. Make sure to watch that before you start playing around with the Flux context. So, let's jump in. How can we use Flux context with WAN 2.1? Here, I've got a workflow that I built last weekend. I was playing around with something, and I came up with a possible way of using WAN 2.1 AI video, alongside the flux context. A lot of times, we might have different images we want to use and make the most of. For example, we'll use this image as an example in this tutorial. It's just a woman riding a bike, pretty normal stock footage. Using flux context, you can modify items within the image and it'll turn out something like this. Now, this isn't the best quality from flux context, but you get the idea. It can change the bike into a motorbike, making it look like she's racing down the road. The outfit of the character will eventually need to be modified step by step, and that's considered best practice. According to the official Flux Context documentation, changing objects step by step within an image is much more accurate compared to trying to change the whole image in one generation. So, in this example, after I changed the bike to a motorbike, the next step was to give her a leather jacket and leather pants. The way I did it here, I have a preview image that I can manually save. Or, if you prefer to save automatically, you can change the nodes to save image notes. Maybe the next steps we'll do are saving it manually. I already saved this image, and now we're going to use it as input here. Alternatively, if you use autosave with the save image node, you can load the image from the output folder. This is a new update node that comes from Comfy UI's native nodes. You can load the output folder's image list from this node here. All right, so back to the settings. I've got my first edited image saved in this folder. Then, what I'll do is add a leather jacket to the outfit of this character compared to what we had in the input image. It's very blurry because the input image is small and low resolution. As you can see, it's only 600 pixels. It's not even able to create something good from that. That's why I'm using this as an example to try to improve the resolution at the same time. For this first edit, I used 1024 pixels resolution. Then right now, I've got this image in this path. Based on this path, I'm going to put another prompt here to change the character's outfit. After the second generation for the image edit, it took about 25 seconds, which is pretty good. Then, coming back to the text prompts, what I did was simple. I just told the AI to change the outfit to a black leather jacket and pants for this female motorbiker. So, Here's the generated result compared to the old image. As you can see, side by side, it looks a little better. We've got this edit already, and now let's say we also want to modify the shoes and helmet. Then, repeat the steps. We can save this again to our folder. Personally, I like to do this step by step manually so I can see the progress. Then, come back here, update the image, and go through each step. Right now, we've changed the entire outfit, the helmet, and the bike in this image. We've got a clearer picture compared to what we started with in the original stock image. You can see this is the second edit of the image, and this is the third time I've added the helmet and the leather jacket and pants. Now we're moving on to the next steps, which will involve using WAN 2.1 to create the video. I've set up two of the most common ways of using Flux Context and collaborating with WAN 2.1 or any AI video you prefer to use. But in my example here, I'm using image to video as the most common method after generating the Flux Context image to animate it into a video. The second method I applied to this workflow is the first last frames approach, which I've grouped everything here for you to see. First and last frames. It's a very simple way of making this happen. And then, Image to video again, right here. You can enable this group and it'll show you. So, the first frame, 
we're going to run an example using image to video with the first frame. This first frame is coming from the image generated by Flux, where we have the generated image from here. I've set the image parameters called image flux. So the output of this generated image will bring us to the next step here, and we're going to use these sections for generating the video. By having the width and height, I've made them customizable in this case because for flux, we might have different dimensions. You'll need to do your math based on whatever dimensions you're generating in the flux image. In this case, we're using 1024 by 1024. But when you bring it to WAN 2.1, most configurations might not be able to generate at 1024 pixels or that resolution. You might want to try 720 by 720 or 480 by 480 in this case. And if you have the image in landscape view with a 16 to 9 ratio, then you'll want to adjust the resolution accordingly to suit your image to video needs. So, Set the dimensions here for resizing the image. And then, we're starting with the first frame. It's a very simple, basic way of using image to video here. For the model loader, I've set one of the model loaders here where I'm using Fusion X FP16, and I've predefined the multi-GPU setup for GGUF models. If you have, let's say, an image to video model, I've got the Q6GGUF quantization model as an example. You can do that too. So, let's run this one time and you can see how it's going to work. We're going to load the clip loader and the VAE and now pass it to the image to video. Start the sampling here. Okay, so after generating this first frame to video, I've got the generated result again. Just using 10 steps and a very typical way of doing image to video with WAN 2.1 right here. I got this pretty fun way of animating the frames. Now, it's a motorbike on the highway like this, and there's even some explosion in the background. The next example is going to be the first and last frame showcase. Now, I've got the image reference one as the start frame and the flux generated image as the end frame. So, from what I have here, for example, this image, I'm going to use the original image from here. I think it's better to keep the bike the same, but transition the character. Hopefully, she'll transition into the leather jacket and the bike helmet as our last generated image here. Then, it'll be able to use the reference image and the flux image here. So, in this example, the first and last frames are going to be a little different. Now, I've put one more image loader here. For loading the image from the path, I use the resize image. Either way works. You can use the first reference image from the Flux group, which would be this one. But sometimes, when we're using Flux context to edit the image multiple times, like in this example, where we went from a bike to a motorbike, changed the outfit, and added a helmet, I think the better practice is to save the image at every editing step for backup and later use. That way, you can choose whichever one you like. In this case, I'll choose the first frame using this image and load it up here in the file path for the start image. I'm not going to use the reference image here because the reference image is this one. It won't have much visual effect if it's very close to what you have in the generated result from Flux. So, like this, it's more obviously different than what I have in the second edit image, right? I want more visual effect for the transition. So, I choose this image and use the Flux result as the last image for the end frame. Here, I'll be transitioning a female bike rider into a motorcycle rider, and I'll add my text prompts here for explosions and the speed of the roll, things like that. For the first and last frames group, because this is a different model compared to image to video, this is using vase. So I connect the model loader differently. Here, I'll be using the WAN 2.1 vase. In this case, I'm using the Fusion X fine tune model and connecting these here. Or, if you want to tighten it up, you can choose another model loader like this, connect the get node from here using the model, the one model set node value. Either way works, but this is more directly effective for me to edit the workflow. So let's try this and see how it runs. We're going to use these dimensions from the width and height, because I've also set the setting groups here for the video. One more thing I should mention is that I kept this description note here. This is by default from the flux context. As I mentioned in the previous video, you can click Browse Template, go to Flux, and you'll have this template here 
where you'll get the same template we talked about in the last video. This is more information for you to reference. I kept that information here for you guys to have some reference, especially the prompt technique here. I think it's useful for using Flux context. So let's try this one and see how it looks compared to the image to video. As you can see, the first time I ran this group, it loaded the video correctly. This is what I wanted for the first frame. Okay, so I got the generated video. Visually, this isn't a great example, but you get the idea of what the first and last frame is for image editing. Of course, this goes through each frame and the explosion differences in the timeline of the video. You can see that the AI helps me transition the character changing clothes. This experiment works, but yeah, visually, it's not the best example. So, let's try something else with a bit more flair. I'm going to use this image in a simpler way to present how the transitions will work. This time, it's going to use the image reference for the first and last frames here for the input settings and the last frame. Obviously, we're using the flux generated image, and now it's generating based on this input image. Then, the next step is to go back to the first and last frame again. You'll see that it will present a better way of showing how the video will look. Okay, so the image is here, and you can see this is the first input image. After flux context, I added prompts to change the hand position of the character, so it would look like this. Now, we're going to start with the first and last frames again. This time, it'll be easier. We don't need to import any image from the path, and we're going to use image reference 1 from the groups above in this workflow. We can bypass this resize image because we don't need to use it as input. So, this is it. Based on this very simple modification of the image, I just used a very simple word here. That's all I needed for the flux context. So, in some ways, it's very convenient for image editing. Imagine if you were using a traditional image editor to do something like this, you might spend quite a bit of time doing that. Let's try generating this instead of the motorbike transition. After the video is generated, we've got a much better visual result for the video. As you can see here, it's actually coming from Flux, where we have the start frame using this image and the end frame using this image generated by Flux context. With these two comparisons, you can see it's the same person, but with a different pose for the character. The backgrounds are very consistent as well, thanks to Flux context. So it's really easy right now to use the start and end frames like this to create smooth video animations throughout, just by using two image frames here to create such a video effect. Of course, you can use other kinds of video effects if you have fast action scenes. Maybe the two image frames are totally different angles or totally different buildings. You can also import that into this node here for the WAN videos face to face to handle the job. It's also able to manage that. Lately, I like to use 720p because it just gives better results and generates higher resolutions by doing that. As you can see, across the full 5 seconds of this page, we're still able to control what actions the character does throughout the flux context and using the start and end frame like this. These are the basic ideas of what you can commonly use for in-context image models and collaborate with AI video for such things. It's really easy to do. Not a lot of complicated connections and workflows and stuff. As you can see, all my sampling here uses the basic ideas of sampling for native nodes and flux as well. Sometimes back to basics is the better approach. It's clearer and more directive. That is it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.